Will your car make it, Colin? Oh, God. <laughs> no, it probably will. Fill his tank up, Steph. Hello, Fill hello. Good up. day, everybody. Here we got Daniel's already giving instruction as his house of what has to happen right now. <laughs> uh, Georgie's there, all happy. Jupiter's, of, of course, with three monitors checking out what's happening in the world. Well, my name is Federico Hernandez from Savvy. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, I want to I want to introduce the Let's Get Tropical channel with Georgie and Jupiter, and they have an amazing guest today. Guys, have fun. Let's drink. I'm excited to see what cocktail uh, Georgie's got in mind. See you guys. <laughs> Bye, fitting. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I guess I'll go first. <laughs> well, for <laughs> ladies. <laughs> Um, just going through and checking out our, our tech here. Um, thanks so much for joining us. I know that for those of you that joined us last week, we had a little bit of a technical issue. So hopefully that has been taken care of. Um, as always, we are on a delay. So keep that in mind, but um, we will do our best. So of course we have Georgie as always. Georgie, how are you? I'm very good. I'm, fe I'm feeling, feeling great actually, to be honest. I've been uh... A uh, whole week last week in Lucky King, getting ready for this weekend to start making cocktails for takeaway. And Yay. hopefully in uh, 4th of July, uh, celebrating our reopening. But that's hopefully. But now the more, the more important thing today uh, for me is, uh, well, every, every uh, Tuesday we're trying to bring you something really special for you uh, in the Tiki world, guys. But... Uh, Today, uh, is something that, uh, that I really uh, 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 show that I really wanted to kind of like uh, uh, experience myself as well and bring to you guys is uh, because when, when we speak about Tiki, lots of like me as a bartender, I see Tiki in a different perspective. I see it a lot uh, about ingredients, about cocktails. For many people, Tiki is more about the experience the escapism, the way of living, which is more linked to art and to what you see. And so I can't think of a better person to actually speak to you about that, guys, and about how you can actually transform someone into, into a different uh, world by all the art that you're doing, uh, if this is a, a bar or is your tiki mark or, or anything related to it. That can take you away uh, from uh, from where you are, and uh, this is uh, my good friend, the devil of Tiki Tiki Diablo. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, we're very excited to have you. I know that this very was something exciting. that um, we were definitely look forward to. Both of us are huge fans of your art, of course, um, which you've created some pretty major. Some pretty major stuff so <laughs> how have you been holding up during quarantine um really good no complaints um just you know trying to keep busy keep my brain working and my hands moving mm -hmm. um and uh you know just trying to be productive and uh, useful you know yeah and you guys didn't you premiere something during quarantine i thought i saw something about that uh yeah we did a couple of uh, a couple of things um it was important for me first before I tried to uh, sell anything was to put our mugs to work. Uh, so we kind of put a shout out, uh, open call to anybody that um, needed a mug um, and wanted one. We would ship them one for free and they could do whatever they wanted with it. They could uh, eBay it, sell it, donate it, do a raffle. Uh, so... I kind of wanted to um, help others before I helped myself. Very um, cool. And Stephanie and I are big believers in that. So um, we did that. And then, you know, we debuted some mugs. Uh, and uh, one of them was for uh, a drive-in movie theater uh, that right now is just blowing up. Um, it's the number one theater in the nation because it's a drive-in movie theater. And it's a huge, huge property, four screens, like uh, oh uh, twenty-seven acres. Wow! Uh, and it's and it's tiki theme. Uh, so where is this? 
<laughs> this is this is in the city of Montclair, uh, which is about 45, 50 minutes outside of Los Angeles uh, in a suburb. And it's, you know, it's been featured in like movie, movies, uh, commercial Mission Tiki videos. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's called the, the Mission Tiki Drive-In. And that was probably probably my first huge project. Um, oh, that's and, cool. And you know, it was it was so huge it was overwhelming. I had a nightmare the night before I was supposed to start work, and I dreamt that I was creating a, a Easter Island head, a Moai head that was supposed to be twelve feet tall, and all I had were popsicle sticks and Elmer's glue. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay. So, you know. Um. I don't want to cut you off, but I do want to, um, I want to jump in because we, uh, we're we notorious for <laughs> going over. So I'm going to try to like focus us today. Um, but I know that we're going to come back to this, but I want to go ahead and uh, do this really quick. So um, for those who are just, who are joining us for the first time, aloha and welcome. Thank you so much. Um, the way that we generally work things is we do an introduction. Um, as you, if, you know, with Crowdcast, we have a couple of tools for you. We have a chat box as well as a place for you to ask questions. Um, I definitely suggest um, our community here with Let's Get Tropical is pretty great. We usually have a lot of interaction in the chat box, which um, I'm usually monitoring. And then sometimes if Georgie can get his to work, <laughs> he's watching over it too. Um, but then we also have the ask a question option, which is really great because what that does is it um, puts your question into a queue which we will um, work with later. So that way I don't miss your questions. So that's pretty, it's very useful and I definitely suggest it. Um, also, if you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube, um, we won't be able to see your comments on Facebook. YouTube, I'm able to watch. So um, feel free to ask questions if you want. But if you're on Facebook or if you want to be more interactive with the show, please jump on Zavvy, Z-A-V-V-Y dot C-O and check us out there because that's really kind of where our platform is, is dedicated towards. So um, usually, you know, if you are joining us, we absolutely invite you to share the event and grow the community. It's a lot of fun and we love doing it every week. Um, so and for our agenda, we do 30 to 40 minutes of presentation, although I would bet that it's probably going to be longer because Diablo is um, an amazing artist and he has some great information that we're, we're both uh, very excited to share with you guys. And then the last uh, segment is going to be that Tiki O'Clock Q&A, and that's where I pull those questions from, is that Ask the Question Q. So let's and then I have a friend, you know? Yes, and then we also, of course, have our weekly cocktail. Which, Georgie, what are we doing this week? What did What did you ask for, Daniel? Uh, I asked for a Demerara Dry Float, Ooh. and that's my go-to cocktail at the Mai Kai in Fort Lauderdale. Very cool. That's very yeah. I actually I like those. I've had those before. So okay. So do you want? Are you ready to start, Mr. Diablo? Sure, I'm ready. Voila. All right. <laughs> um, so I guess I should just jump right into it. Yeah, just go ahead and jump in. And then whenever you're ready to go to the next screen, just let me know. And you can just say, you know, all right, let's switch on the next slide and then I can control. Okay. Um, so basically, um, uh, you guys asked me like, well, what do you want to talk about? And I'm like, oh man, I don't know. I mean, what do I have to offer? Um, so I guess I said, well, I could talk about, you know, um, designing uh, tiki bars uh, obviously this is like super light. We're just skimming the top. We don't, you know, we could talk about this for, you know, a year straight. Um, but basically it's designing Tiki bars, the space, um, and also, uh, mug design, you know, considering the traditions and also today's climate. Um, so usually when we are approached by a client, um, uh, to do a Tiki bar, uh, first and foremost, um, I have to like the client, and I, I don't want to sound like an elitist, but <laughs> this is this is uh, we're joining into a marriage, and yeah, we're you're gonna, an artist. yeah, yeah, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna go through ups and downs, hills and valleys. Uh, we're gonna basically we're we're creating uh, this living, breathing thing that's you know supposed to have this life. So basically, we're gonna have a kid together. Uh, so we need to get along. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm going to hand this kid over to you and you're going to be like, okay, take care of it. Make sure, you know, it does what it's supposed to do, you know, be a good parent. Um, so 
if we click and we get along and I'm down with the concept, um, then I'm like, okay, you know, let's, let's do this. So it usually starts with a conversation, which is, you know, getting to know each other. Uh, and then, um, I listen to, you know, their, their, their wants, their needs, their loves, their hates. Um, and then it starts with just sketching something as, as, as basic as this. It's just something very loose. Um, it's a conceptual drawing. It's not a blueprint. It's just kind of a mood or a feeling. Uh, and um, I'm kind of, I'm a big proponent. My personal favorite style is um, nautical exotic ports of call. Um, and I do, cool. I do love Tiki, um, but we've seen, a, I mean, we've seen our fair share of bamboo and lahala and thatching. Um, I'm a wood carver first, so I want to carve as much as I can, and I want to do woodwork uh, because also the theory is uh, when you design a bar, you have to make it, uh, you have to be able to maintain it. You're going to have worst case scenarios every night, you know, drunk people hanging on stuff, you know, <laughs> spilling their drinks. Uh, that's so that's with, the best case scenario. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so I, I'm a big proponent in wood. Uh, I mean, I did undertow in Phoenix, and we literally only had, when I stepped away from the project, we literally only had like nine pieces of bamboo in the whole bar. Uh, everything else was um, nautical, wood, um, you know, finish. So basically, this is this is it. You know, it, we're presenting a nautical feel, super super influenced by the Molokai Bar and the Maikai, mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of like an a, a, an old place that looks like it's been there for a hundred years. So I want instant mood. Um, so I'm yeah. I think we're ready for the next slide. Uh, and then we start discuss start discussing. Okay, well, you know. Uh, wall treatments, uh, like I touched on before, um, do you want to be able to maintain this bar without a whole lot of, uh, you know, removal and repair? Uh, so I kind of suggest a um, hand-hewn wood paneling. Um, that's one thing that we've implemented in the project I'm on right now. So what we're doing is we're using uh, the natural, uh, traditional wall coverings from the classic tiki bar era, um, like Lahala or bamboo panels and we're actually doing artwork on top of them um and this isn't anything new this is actually something that um the people that built the tiki room in uh disneyland did mm -hmm. so they used the this natural woven uh fabric or material as a canvas so it's like double layer it's it's really you know um more interesting than just you know slapping something up on the wall and putting some varnish on it and calling it a day. Uh, and these are super easy key elements um, to help sell the story of the bar. Every bar should have a story, it should have a backstory, uh, a fable, you know, um, something fictional. And these are really good um, uh, opportunities to help sell the story. I mean, you could make up, you make up some story where it's like, well, this is the map to the hidden treasure for the, you know, the the original. Um, lost drink of you know the tiki world um and uh you know we have uh, uh it helps sell the exotic feel uh of the place and it really lends to like an exotic ports of call because you can really introduce any element you want into this story um there is there are certain key elements that have to be in a tiki bar for it to be considered a tiki bar um i know we've ever been kind of getting away from that uh but but at one point, like in the drink world, uh, if you change a recipe too much, it's not the drink it was intended to be. It's not what it started out. So now it's not this. Now it's something else. It's that. Um, so we do have some uh, classic uh, things like tapa cloth. Uh, one thing that, that we've moved into um, is uh, making our own tapa cloth. So we're not taking... Uh, a piece of material that was created for a very important part in someone's life um, and cutting it up. Um, so we're kind of making our own and that's something that was important to me because some of these tapa cloths are 
uh, used for like really important uh, events in a person's life uh, in the South Pacific. Um, and it's a work of art. So I wouldn't, I don't want to be that guy that's cutting it up uh, or carve panels in uh, Polynesian design, but not copying. You have to do your own artwork. You can't just, you know, face value copy somebody. You have to do your, your own interpretation of it. Uh, and, you know, in, out of respect to, uh, you know, the artist that created it. Um, when you do like your, because your preferred or, your, you know, this thing that you really enjoy doing is that ports of call. Is that generally where you start to pull in these different styles of the different cultures? Is that you kind of like work with the whatever port of call you happen to be kind of following for that specific theme? Or do you kind of bring in different? um of the island cultures altogether or how do you kind of perceive which way do you go um well i always think of myself as an old salt sailor that traveled the world and collected things that that caught his eye that or had oh, a memory okay. that's that cool tied into this and brought him back to his you know to his lair mm -hmm. or to his home um to his port um and hung him up so all of these things uh kind of lend to this story of you know the artifacts and the pieces that are in, in the space have a personal connection to uh, the host or the owner of the bar mm -hmm. or you know this fictional character. That's cool. That's super cool. <laughs> All right, I think I'm ready you for the must, next. You really enjoyed when you were designing the undertow. Uh, by the way, undertow is one of my favorite bars. Is yeah. That yeah. The, 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 uh, and and the drink. So th this is something that really combines everything together. Like you created something, up, and that is like it's a super small bar. <laughs> so you literally it was a, as a place that you're fixing cars from underneath, and they turned yeah. into a bar. It's super small, and what you've designed in there and made it with a little nautical kind of like windows that you look almost like almost like you are inside of the ship and you're sailing. It, it's insane. It's so beautiful. And the drinks that uh, Jason Asher created in there, and the experience that you get when you go inside, this is something that I always say, you almost done something great out of nothing. It's like, it's just insane. Like, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the classic approach is creating something out of nothing. Um, but to be totally honest, I had a super small part in that build. Uh, oh, but yeah. it was probably one of the most, uh, uh, pleasurable experiences working with the client, with my clients. I mean, I've, I'm lucky that I pick clients that I like, and I didn't know them at first, but we all became friends after. But the the real genius, obviously, the genius behind the the, the drinks is Jason. Uh, but the architect was um, Wes was the 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 genius behind that. Um, I did come in very early, and kind of we kind of had a, a round table discussion and I kind of explained my vision um, verbally what it should look like and um, but the actual hands-on that like you know did the walls and, the, and did the portholes that was all Wes. Wes is an amazing architect and he's also I believe uh, um, you know involved in the actual bar and not running day to day but in, in, he was involved in the project and that I okay. believe that was um, he came in and that actually that project was highlighted on the Discovery Channel. So they documented the process. For I remember it. that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was pretty crazy. Uh, and it was hilarious because I had a, a my initial time there was only five days. So I rolled in. Um, I had just finished a project in Bakersfield. And actually the, the picture that's up now on the screen is the basement to the bar in Bakersfield. Um, so I, I did the upstairs. And then I, you know, basically went home, did my laundry, you know, edited my tools and then went straight to, to Phoenix. And I had to carve um, four tiki's and the bar top in five days. So oh. Oh. I was, you know, I basically just, you know, uh, put my head down and worked. Uh, but it was, it was such a pleasure to, on that build that Wes, the architect um, asked me, hey, well, will you stay on longer? uh to help us with the you know like the faux finishing and the detailing uh 